Welcome, people, one and all, to a delve into the madness and decay of the human sanity. The Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition role playing system. I am your keeper, Hexilius Maorianus, otherwise known as Hex the Game Master. And I have four lovely, lucky, or are they unlucky, players with me who may introduce themselves in any order they wish. Who wants to go first? All right, well, uh, hi, I'm Dark. Uh, my character's name is KC. That is the letters KC. Uh, and she is, uh, uh, she has short, medium brown hair and green eyes. Uh, and she is often mistaken for a boy. And due to the fact that she is a blacksmith, she often doesn't bother to correct people. We'll, we'll find that uh, there's more than one party member with this issue, but uh, that is... Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> We're in the uh, 1920s. What do you expect? Indeed, indeed. Who's next? Who's next? You know what? I'll go. Let's do this. Uh, my name is uh, Adam Marland, and... Uh, I'll do. I'll start with personal description. And, uh, uh, well, your personal description and all that. We'll 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 get to that. Like, uh, like the the oh, okay. the intro I wrote is structured around you giving it. <laughs> oh, I'm in, I'm like the, done. this was this was just like hi. My name is is uh like hi. My name is David and I'm playing Adam right, Marlin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm oh. done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, you I, I, me David I, I, I just didn't want to interrupt Dark. <laughs> I am such a dense dude. It's whatever. But yeah. Um, I apologize. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. I should have made that clear. <laughs> you're good. Okay, so yeah, I'm David Remington. I don't care what you call me either or. Uh, I'm playing Adam Marland, and... Uh, it doesn't I'm... matter what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, uh, yeah, he's just a carpenter. Uh, I'm Adam Marland's a carpenter. Um, I'll just start this off with that. Spo spoiling so much the magic... <laughs> Ugh. I'm sorry! I don't know how this crap goes. My heart! My heart! Okay, who's next? Who's next? <laughs> uh, oh, we can do a take two. I mean, if you want, uh, I could. Uh, Alright, I'm Randy, and my character is Thomas Lawton. I'm a simple lumberjack from Rudy Plain. Alright, and finally, last but not least, the uh, the who in the room... Hello everyone, I am Fluffy Artist, and my character's name is Floyd Emile. I am the Doctor. Doctor Who. But not really. And these four- I've been watching although... House lately, so that was my first thought. <laughs> and these four, <laughs> although they do not quite know it yet, are the investigators, the protagonists of the upcoming story. As we begin our tale of madness and insanity, we begin- in a late summer day of the 17th of September, 1920, in the Boston area, in which uh, our Mrs. Casey O'Neill has received a letter. Uh, Miss, thank you very much. Miss Casey O'Neill has received a letter. <laughs> I am not married, thank you. Nope, I guess not. We, we didn't determine that. Uh... <laughs> You have received a letter uh, from a person who you recognize as the father of your best friend by the name of Catherine Thomas. Uh, and I will read you the letter that you receive. Uh, Dear KC, I hope you are well. I want to thank you again for lending my daughter a hand in getting to and from work while our car was in the shop. I should, have, I should have the money to cover those extra fuel expenses mailed to you sometime next week. I am afraid, however, that this is not a social call. I have a most pressing issue regarding my business that requires some volunteer assistance, and my daughter Catherine has told me that you would be an excellent person to ask for help. If you could visit us at your earliest convenience, I can offer more details. I can assure you both that this matter will pique your interest, and that I am willing to compensate you well for any assistance you can lend. With cordiality, Lloyd Thomas. And I will send you a... 
I will send you that as a handout. I will post it into the voice channel chat. But that is what you have just read in the letter. What do you wish to do? Uh, well, Casey would, uh, first thing, would go check to make sure uh, that uh, that there isn't anything pressing to do uh, at the at the shop. I would say um, that is uh, completely up to your choice whether there is something. Uh, unless you want to leave it up to a luck roll. Yeah, let's leave it up to luck. Oh boy. Alright. First luck roll of the game. What is your luck? 55 if I recall correctly. Uh, look at me being an expert keeper not even having the dice roller up and ready to go. <laughs> That's Ooh. a good point. Alright. Well, I mean, I just realized I don't have a dice up either so uh, either. you said your luck uh, was 55 yeah it's a pretty free day <laughs> all right so uh in that case casey is going to let her let her father know uh that she will be going to see her friend because uh her dad needs something. He is understanding. Uh, I assume you take your car there. Uh, uh yeah. All right. Uh, drive is relatively uneventful. Uh, your friend lives uh, a little bit more in the suburban area. You live a bit closer to the industrial uh, sector. Uh, so it's about a about a twenty minute drive. Uh, traffic's a bit. Uh, uh, as you pull up to this relatively well uh, and affluent area of the suburbs of Boston, you uh, pull up to the curb, you get out of your car, uh, and as you're approaching the house, you hear a public transport bus coming around the corner. Uh, it stops at the curb, and off of it, walks a certain tall, uh, strongly built man by the name of Thomas Lawton, who may introduce himself. Alright. Hello there, Miss Casey. How are you, you don't, today? You, you do not know each other. Oh, Base, basically, I forget you, about that. You, 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 um, this, amnesia. This, this, this is the part with the, with the, with the <laughs> character, the personal description. Oh. <laughs> It's all going according right. to plan. Alright. Um, I walk over and I'm just kind of standing around then. Um, what, is your, what, is your, what does your character look like? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. I have brown hair brown eyes, chiseled facial features, and tan skin. Uh, I'd also like to add that I have a beard. Indeed. He looks to be a bit uh, on the more lower class uh, side of things. A bit probably worse off than you. You can see a, a few stains on his, uh, on his shirt. And Mr. Lawton, you are at the residence of Lloyd Thomas as he is a business associate of yours and personal friend. Uh, in the past, when you were unemployed, uh, he gave you a few odd jobs to uh, clear some forestry for some new land developments. Uh, and through that, uh, you earned enough to keep on your feet, eventually getting hired to a lumbering mill. Uh, and you arranged for Mr. Thomas to be a customer to purchase some of the wood supply uh, and you even got a raise from your boss for making the connection. Uh, since then you have been pretty good friends and business associates and you are currently here to collect a payment for one of those shipments. Uh, and as you exit the bus you see a Miss Casey O'Neill who may describe how her character appears. Uh, as I said earlier, um, she is, uh, average height, um, looks, 
and looks more like a, a boy who's just a bit short, uh, but average for a woman. Uh, she has medium brown hair and green eyes, uh, and she is dressed in uh, what's clearly um, not exceptionally wealthy, but definitely of the upper middle class. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, uh, just, uh, a little out of, out of character thing, I guess, huh. like, for you guys to know. Um, she has her mother's wedding ring on a chain that she wears as a necklace and keeps under her shirt. And this is the person you are presented with. Do either of you acknowledge each other's presence in any way, or do you just continue on your way towards the house? I just say, excuse me, and just keep walking. Uh, and Casey would let him by and then continue to the house once he passed. You both travel from the, uh, from the curb. The, uh, bus hisses as the, as the uh, Doors close and it drives off, uh, letting out a probably unhealthy amount of smoke behind it. Uh, you both continue up a gravel path uh, on a relatively uh, well kept lawn, uh, and as you approach the front of the house, you notice a individual who is currently sweating quite a lot working very hard on a plant box underneath one of the first story windows on the front of the house. Uh, this individual is by the name of Adam Marlin, who may introduce himself. Hi, uh, I am Adam Marlin. I have a rugged appearance uh, with plenty of workplace, scar uh, workplace scars to boot, a very strong jawline with, em uh, jawline with emerald green eyes, along with very short black hair. A massive stiff scar on the right cheek uh, from horse playing in a shop as a teenager, and my left big toe is partially amputated from a workplace accident. And if you cannot tell from those scars themselves, I am a carpenter working on furniture. Neither of you uh, are familiar with this man, but this is who you see. And Mr. Adam, you have been uh, working six since 6 a.m. Uh, in the uh, late summer heat of September uh, for quite a while now. Uh, you've been uh, putting up some of these uh, some of these plant boxes around the, uh, the windows of the house as Lloyd asked you to do. Uh, he's been paying you pretty well. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, as you as the two people approach you, do you uh, acknowledge your presence at all? Yes. I mentioned that the weather is too good to be true. <laughs> In a where it's like just too good, where it's just so hot out here. So the obvious sarcasm is obvious. Mm -hmm. Yep. Either of you two acknowledge uh, his existence at all? <laughs> I take, uh, I take okay. a moment and think, hmm, yeah, the weather is a tad too nice. But I admire your handiwork. Thank you. Uh, would I have uh, like a uh, uh, a bottle of water or something uh, with me? We can. You know what? This is this is another convenient chance for uh, for a luck roll. Let's see. <laughs> Actually, hey, actually, actually, I'm going to actually since this is going to benefit Mr. Adam, I'm going to use Adam's luck, which is actually very fortunate because Adam's luck is a little bit higher. All right. So, no, you just drink it before leaving. Okay. Huh. Okay, understandable. Besides, I already have a sweat rag on hand. I could just wipe it off. 
wipe off the sweat. And fortunate for you, as you two uh, approach, and uh, you are nailing in the last little nail for this uh, particular plant uh, planter box, uh, Mr. Thomas opens the front door uh, to inform you, uh, Oh, Mr. Marland, uh, it's noon. You can come in for some lunch. Yeah, sure, I'll come on in. And as- Uh, Casey- uh, I'm assuming Casey's known uh, known him basically all her life, right? Uh, indeed. Uh, you have you mostly spent time with uh with his with his daughter Catherine, but you do know him by name. You know him to be a, a decent all around man. Uh, you know him to work within the real estate market. Uh, he buys uh, properties, does development on them, rents them out to people, uh, and you know him to be of generally good repute. Uh, uh okay. So, uh, she waves. Hi, Lloyd, how are you? Ah, Casey. I'm glad to see you got my letter. Oh, and Mr. Thomas. It's good to see you too. Uh, why don't you uh. both come in? Uh, I'm just having uh, some lunch getting ready. Uh, Catherine's preparing it in the kitchen. Um, could I bother you for a bottle of water, Click? Uh, uh, sure. We have plenty of water in the kitchen. I find a seat to sit down. Alright, uh, Casey's going to find a bottle of water. Yep, that's and easy enough. Then, uh, and then quickly head back out to uh, Adam. Uh, I believe Adam was going inside as well. <laughs> oh. Thank you. I thought you said he had more work to do still. Oh, no, no, no. Lloyd called him in for like a lunch break. Because it's oh, currently okay. noon. Oh, okay. Uh, so you three are now in the dining room of the, uh, of the Thomas house. Uh, this is a very relatively well-furnished place. The chairs seem not too exquisite, but quite serviceable and uh, well-made. Uh, table is of a uh, fine oak uh, and has uh, a few decorations on it, some uh, some mats, uh, and even a fruit basket in the middle. Uh, you see, uh, from off in the kitchen, your Mrs. Casey, you see Miss Catherine uh, currently working- Again, not married. <laughs> this is gonna be great. I'm tired, yeah. okay? <laughs> I haven't slept. The Adderall's kicking yeah. in. The Adderall's no, kicking no, in. No, the, the Adderall's kicking down more like. I took that thing at like 6 a.m. Oh. <laughs> it is It is now 10, 10 and a half hours after that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, actually, technically, for people with ADHD, stimulants calm us down. In... True. <laughs> which is why Cap, which is why, which why is why it is always, there. yeah, which is why I mean, it has always confused me why people are like, I can't drink caffeine after 4 p.m. I'm like, bitch, that's the only way I get to sleep. <laughs> Whenever my brother drinks a Red Bull, he runs what? around the house like he's a jungle gym. Oh, boy. Well, then clearly he doesn't have ADHD. No, he does. <laughs> he is a freak. A zoid. All right. So, uh, anyway, um, uh, Casey, you see, uh, Catherine in the kitchen currently preparing, uh, some food, uh, a couple drinks as well, uh, you wish to say hi to her? Or? Uh, Casey is gonna quickly grab a bottle of water to, uh, replace the one that she drank before she left. Hey, Cat, what's up? Need any help? Oh, uh, no, I'm almost done. Uh, thanks, though. It's good to see you again. Uh, I'm sure my dad should be able to pay you back for, uh, for all the gas and stuff. I told you before. Don't bother. <laughs> it's really no big deal. Yeah, uh, I know. Sorry, I... She, uh... She looks, uh... She looks off to the side a bit. Accidentally spills a, a little bit of uh, drink, quickly cleans it up. I've, I've been really worried lately about my mother. She's fallen ill. I, ha I haven't heard from the doctors. Uh, 
she, he, I, I don't know. They, they, they're up there with them right now. She's been sick for the last two weeks. I hadn't heard that. I hope she gets better. I hope so, too. You know how all these diseases go. Just had, a uh, just had the Spanish flu. For We're just hoping it's not that. And, uh, eventually the, uh, the meals are finished, and, uh, she excuses herself to deliver them to the table. Uh, uh, Casey's gonna follow. And, uh, if there's anything that, like, is, uh, you know, if there's, like, uh, more than one tray or something, Casey's gonna grab, uh, one to also, like, uh, also help bring stuff out. Yep. She's very appreciative of that. Uh, you, uh, you put the, uh, plates down in front of everybody. Everybody has a, uh, a nice helping of, uh, chicken stew to uh, eat. Uh, mm. And as as all of you, the, the three of you, Catherine and Lloyd, are at the, uh, at the dining table, uh, an individual by the name of Floyd Amill enters the room with their doctor's kit. And that person may introduce themselves. Lloyd walks in, and from the look on their face, you would think it'd be good news. But that's just their face. They're not jacked, but they're not too scrawny either. They're below average in height. There's a giant scar on their, on their left eye. This doctor has been through hell and back, for they were the doctor during the war. The doctor looks towards the group. What was the name, what was the name of the daughter again? Uh, Catherine. Catherine. Ah, young Catherine. Uh, I finished my examination on your mother. Uh, before you announce that result, I'm actually going to have you do a roll for that. Okay, uh, what type of roll? So, I would like you to roll a d100 and to try to score beneath your medicine skill as you are trying to treat uh, the uh, oh, wife shoot. of Hang Lloyd Thomas. Hang on a second. Yeah, um, also, just, uh, also, just a uh, quick reminder, this is the 1920s, so you would be addressing the father rather than the daughter. Yeah. Yeah, but I still would tell the mother, hey, I have the di- I finished my diagnosis on your mom. Uh, yes. Uh, I will actually allow you to make this with one bonus die, considering, uh, that you are this family's personal doctor. Uh, you have been, uh, you've been, uh, offering your services to them ever since you, uh, got back from the war. They were one of your first, uh, clients, uh, back okay. when- you said my role plus what? Uh, so you're going to get one bonus die, which means basically you're rolling with advantage. You get to roll two D100s and pick the the better number. So okay. you, you're you're going to roll a D100 twice. Tell me what both of them are. Ow! Hang on. Ow! Ow! Sorry, my cat's clawing at my stomach. <laughs> the, uh... Okay, one's, one was a 67 and one was a 77. So I'm going 77. Uh, you want to go with the lower one. Uh, okay. lower rolls are better. Uh, okay, then but 67. 67. What is your medicine skill? for? That is a fail. What? I was 44 is my medicine. Yeah, so that's your chance of success. You're trying to equal or lower the skill. Ow. Uh, so that's how, that's how the rolls work. You want to roll the skill or under it. Uh, so you have gotten a 67. You inform, uh, uh, basically, the results of your examination are that, uh, she's, uh, the wife, whose name is Barbara, is suffering from a severe case of the flu. Oh, uh, you were going with the flu? I was going to go with tuber- tuberculosis. Oh, you want to go with that? All right. Because, like, there is, there is a vaccine for tuberculosis in development that you could be experimental with. If they would like to try that, this is nineteen twenties. Mm-hmm. I, I was going with that yeah. logic. All right, you inform them that uh, uh, his wife has tuberculosis, uh, and it's not going well. Uh, 
that you've been uh, trying to do all you can, uh, and you're not really sure what much more than bed rest can do, and just hoping that she can get better. Uh, unless you want to mention the vaccine. I was going to, yeah. Uh, actually, this gives us a, a good chance to explore another thing. Uh, if if you wish to uh, to to uh, use this uh, this vaccine uh, that you have informed me of, I will allow you to re-roll it, and this is what we call a pushed roll. So what you can do is, if you fail a skill roll, you can describe to me like uh, like what you do. Uh, uh, you can justify getting a re-roll on it. So, for example, uh, let's say let's say you know you failed the medicine, but you're going to try a risky treatment that has a chance of working, right? I would give you a chance to re-roll it, but if you fail again, the consequences are worse. Mm. So but it is up to you if you, so it is okay, up to I'll... you if you wish to push it. I, I want to give them the option, and I want to hear the NPC's thoughts. Uh, you inform. Uh, how, what what are you what are you telling them about it? Now, sir, I hate to I hate to tell you this, but your wife is looking very grimly. The tuberculosis is worse than we thought. However, I will say, during my time in the ward, we've uh, they've been developing these medicines that could get rid of your wife's tuberculosis. But as of right now, it is still in development. If you would like, sir, I could give her this this treatment, but it could make it worse. It is entirely up to you how you want this to turn out. He's he's very very unhappy uh, to start with, but uh, he says, "Well, that's understandable. He's yeah. basically just been told his wife is dying." So yeah, it, uh, yeah. Catherine is crying. No, unable to hold uh, back Casey tears. Is, I'm using Casey is going voice. to do her best to comfort and uh, uh, her friend, uh, and she's also probably uh, quite upset about this as well. And, and Lloyd says, well, "What's her chances of making it without it?" Well, let me let me look at my let me look at my roll again. Uh, that was a really high roll, so she's she she's, she uh, might die either. I way. will I I will say you think she has about twenty percent chance to survive without this. So she's only got twenty five percent chance to survive this. The medicine would give her some more time. And he he thinks it's very uh, very painful thoughts. He says D do what you have to do, Floyd. I just want my wife to be okay. I got a 40. That's under my thing. That's a pass. So, oh! So, you have now passed the roll. Uh, so, you go you go back up and you apply the, uh, the vaccine. Hang on a second. I've got a cat in my head. Ma'am! Yep. Uh, I want my food to be here sooner. Uh, 17 minutes at least. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Time to get an airdrop. Are you, uh, are you, uh... Airdrop! <laughs> <laughs> no! No! Emergency airdrop on the fucking way! Your McDonald's is outside! Rob is I'm already by the smoke. Someone just thought it was an airdrop. <laughs> so, uh, Fluffy, that... Say what? Oh, I, I was asking if you're if you're back. Yeah, I just had to. I didn't move her up. She was trying to get on my lap. But I oh, okay. Right side. Right, I thought you had to go for a sec. Okay, so you go back upstairs uh, and you administer the vaccine. Uh, it's going to take a while for you to uh, to see any results and to be able to tell further, but you you have a slightly good feeling. Yes. Uh, that was a close roll. Yeah, that was. That was really close. <laughs> By the way, uh, for a future reference, if you uh, if you notice on your character sheets, there are there are numbers to the right of your skill. 
Uh, so, for example, uh, Floyd, you have a credit rating of 60. Uh, you, you see there's a 30 and a 12 next to it. Uh, those are your chances for hard and extreme uh, roles of that skill. Which are I believe basically... you already went over this when we were doing yeah. the uh, the. So I want to go over check. it again because uh, if any of you guys have the check boxes of your skills, uh, any of them checked, uh, I want you to uncheck them. Uh, you will check those boxes if you make a skill check and get under half of your skill. Okay, oh, okay. so uncheck the all this stuff basically. Yeah. yeah. We were, I remember we used the check so that we would make sure. Yeah, that we yeah. Didn't... That was, that was like purely like a note-keeping thing. The actual function of this is to notate which skills you have used that you will be able to have a chance to improve at the end of the scenario. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So if you get it, what we call a hard success, which is rolling equal to or under half of your skill, you get a check on that skill, which means you have a chance to improve it at the end. Uh, okay. The lower the skill, right. the more of a chance you have to improve it. So, uh, you've done that. And you've come back and you've informed him that you have uh, that you've done that. You uh, advise him to uh, to take uh, health precautions of you know uh, distancing himself, uh, you know, just uh, generally keep uh, keep things cleanly. Uh, yeah. But you inform him there's not really much more than bed rest can do for her until the vaccine takes effect. And he sighs. He thanks you, and he hands you your payment. Uh, he says, Now, um, uh, I should, uh, I suppose I have some business with uh, a few of you. Uh, Miss right. yeah. Casey, uh, I have something I could use your help with, and well, since the other three of you are here as well, I suppose you three could help as well. I'll compensate you all. Uh, all right. I have an issue with one of my properties. I I can't get anyone to to rent it out. I bought it for really cheap at an auction. It was incredibly cheap. It was too good to pass up. And then as I looked into it more, I found out that... How do I say this? It's... Haunted, apparently. It's ah. haunted. I, 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 I wouldn't usually pay attention to such things. We all know, you know, folklore. But yeah, I, I did some digging into it, and apparently, people went mad in there. The last residents, been deaths at the house, and I, I, I don't have many people I can trust with this. I, I've gone to some people that uh that i know in the real estate market and they'll i already know they're going to try to rip me off and just buy it from me and make me lose a ton of money but if i don't get this sorted i'm looking at a dead weight and uh, with how much i need to care for my wife's health now i can't afford any financial burdens so i would really appreciate it if you could look into it for me so what is this address uh Gives you the address of the house. Uh, Part of that. I have had, had a few patients that have gone mad that have been at that place. It is not good at all. And oh. I agree. It is very concerning. I. And he he looks to uh he looks to Thomas now and he says, I know you've come here for your payment, but this burden on my finances is making things difficult to pay. I, if you could help me get it sorted, uh, I can assure you that I'll have your payment next week, and I'll I'll even swing you a bonus for helping out. All of you. I'll... All right. Yeah, I'll be down for that. If it'll help my patient by figuring out what caused the strain, I'll be more than happy to oblige. He smiles and sighs and looks to Casey. Waiting for uh, him. and Casey just smiles. You know me. I'm always up for an adventure. Uh, you you get a slight smile from from Catherine as well. Uh, the two of us were troublemakers as kids, one hundred percent. And and in fact, uh, with that, uh, Catherine also stands up and says, 
Well, if she's going, then I want to go too. It's better than being around here. I don't want to just sit around and be worried about my mother all day. And, uh... Lloyd initially looks a bit, uh... disapproving, but shakes his head and recognizes that there's sense to what she's saying. And nods his head and says, well, another person can't hurt. Uh... If you all, since you all agree to do it, I, I, there's, a, there's a few things uh, that I looked into about this. Uh, there was a, a family that stayed there before. They were called the Macario family. They're, they're the ones who went mad. Uh, uh, yes. Something about a Roxbury Sanitarium, I think, is where they were taken. I don't think it was willingly. You could probably go there. Uh, I imagine there might be something within the whole of records or something about the property. Uh, you all can follow any anywhere you'd like, really. Uh, I'll do some more looking into here. Uh, but if you uh, if you can do this for me, I'll pay you. He uh, he looks through his uh, his wallet grimaces a little bit at what's in there and then sighs and says I could probably afford twenty dollars a day uh, if you if you can get it all sorted I'll I'll, I'll, I'll throw in fifty dollars I just I just want this dealt with I can count on us sir yep yeah. uh, before we leave there's something I'd like to give you as a heads up for your wife Yes. Was your wife ever keen on sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds as snacks? Uh, he he smiles and said, and he says, oh, sunflower seeds. I I remember that's the uh, that's the the first uh, snack we got out at the carnival on our first date. <laughs> she always loves sunflower seeds. Something I've noticed in the soldiers that have gotten this dreadful disease back when I was working in the in the barracks. If you have a lot of sunflower seeds, they've said that it's actually helped ease their symptoms. Which is something I'd like to throw out there. He smiles and he thanks you. He hands you another dollar as a tip. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we won't talk about how you almost killed his wife. I just had to give the good news. I didn't almost kill her. <laughs> The the, fa the failed medicine roll represents uh you well I guess well, yeah. I, mean, like, I guess it wasn't a fumble so you didn't almost kill her I guess it was just a bit it was too close so, for comfort it, it was, yeah it was, it was a rough disease to treat normally uh, it is that's why I chose tuberculosis but uh yeah uh you all finish your meal and uh Lloyd excuses himself uh puts on uh one of the face masks that uh that Floyd has uh given him so that he can visit his wife and Damn, make sure fun. she's okay. Uh, I have I have a converter on on my phone so I was look and looking at these things and damn one dollar is fifteen dollars. <laughs> Holy crap. Yes, uh add, add one dollar to your yeah. cash, uh Floyd. Uh oh sweet. You got a tip. Got a uh tip. and he excuses himself to go up and see his wife. So now Wait. the uh I'm, I'm gonna look up what my cash is, like... Oh! No, look, okay! Okay! Whoops! That's a lot of money! <laughs> Woo! So... Now, it is just you five there, in the dining room. Uh, and... It is now that I will pass it on to you, as to what you wish to do. Uh, you have the address for the house. You have received uh, an address for Roxbury Sanitarium. Uh, he said something about a uh, a uh, hall of records. Uh, and if any of you, if any of you, uh, as a as a bit of advice, if you ever feel a little bit. Uh, a little bit like puzzled as to what to do next uh one of the functions that you can call on is to make an idea roll which is basically uh, a roll against your intelligence to uh kind of have your character kind of like have an idea a light bulb moment 
Uh, I'm gonna be using that a lot because I don't. I this is my first can, time doing D and D style games. Period. If you if you if you uh, if you kind of inform yeah. me about like what what you're trying to the general thing that you're trying to have an idea in regards to, then you can kind of call it at any time. Okay. In other words, right now, if you wanted. Um, I will just getting anything ready in terms of just like supplies. Yep. Uh, Maybe. what kind of supplies? Um, I know like for in, in terms of my end, I'm not sure uh, if my what was it my uh, proficiency in the field uh, would be able to help in regards for what was it <laughs> spiritual witchcraft or whatever that kind of crap was. Uh, not entirely sure. He he mentioned uh, while he was talking about it uh, that uh, the the house is an old house. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, so there might be things like uh, disrepair, uh, yeah. th things like that. So it might be a good idea to have somebody you know who can who can fix her up once uh, yeah. once it's dealt with, uh, yeah. and you know mm. you know make sure things are structurally sound as well to keep everybody safe. Um, exactly. Yeah, I'll be happy to help out with. Uh, um, yeah, I could probably uh, swing by my house to pick up my jewel box while we're on the way down to the property. Okay, um, so that's what you're going to do. Uh, I can offer a ride. Mm -hmm. I'm in my Model T, so I have some work. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you. I'll be happy to hop along. How far are these locations? Uh, you, depend depends on where you want to go. Uh, Casey's gonna take her and Catherine and. Yep. Uh, I think we are gonna go looking through the, uh, gonna go to the city hall and look through the property records of who has owned that since it was All right. built. Alright, so the only person not getting a ride is the guy who doesn't have a car. Great. I'm gonna help, I'm gonna help Adam. Okay. okay, so we're splitting up the party already. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I have a question. I have a question. Yes? Would my practice be on the way to this place? Uh, yeah, same thing your, with my house as well, yeah. Your practice? Uh, your, your Oh, you mean your doctor's office? Yes. Clinic. Ah, uh, the clinic. The clinic. That would be a luck roll. Ah, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, is there a, like a no swearing thing on here? No, no, it's fine. Okay, uh, cool. Just uh, as long as long as long as it as long as it uh, doesn't violate TOS, it's fine. I'm not trying to monetize this. This is just for posterity. Yeah, this is okay, fun. Okay, so what do I roll for this? Uh, you are rolling a D100, and you are trying to uh, get equal to or lower than your luck score. What is my luck score? I think it's fifty. Yep, fifty. Oh boy. So you literally have a fifty-fifty chance. I got a 16. A 16? Well, not only is it close by, but it's actually pretty close to Lloyd's house. Not my house, my, my doctor's office. Yeah, the doctor's office. Oh, wait, Lloyd's house. You, you forget my name is Floyd, so... <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I, uh... Listen, I brainstormed this guy's name at work, at, like, before any of you created your, your characters. I was like, yeah, Lloyd Thomas sounds like a good name, and then you just named yourself Floyd. My first name's Thomas. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then his first name is Thomas. Oh, oh continuity, on. go That's bruh. Great. Uh, we're really on the right foot, and I love it. Hey, food's here, let's go. Alright, hey. so, uh... If you want to take what yeah. five or so you can get your food, then... Oh, no, 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 I, uh, I have it on my desk right now. Oh, cool. It has been brought to me. Yeah, they, they just walked my right kind in. Housemate. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, we split up the party, uh, you asked, your clinic is on the way and it is close by, uh, I assume you want to stop by there first? Yes, just so that I could tell my secretary, do I have a All secretary right. or is it like a, I've never- It is, I... it is your doctor's office, you have what you wish. Okay, then I'm going to just tell my secretary to, uh, Receptionist. Receptionist, thank you. Um, if you could, dear, could you please, uh, make sure I have no more schedules? Did you know, uh, on Keep Catherine's character time. sheet, her job is a receptionist? <laughs> 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 it, it, she, she's not your receptionist. 
she, another. She she works at an office building, like uh, a good while away. <laughs> wow. That's yeah, not as good. All right, Damn, talk about reusing game assets. So you <laughs> you go you go do that. Uh, you inform your secretary of what again? Chirp, uh, chirp. What what did you inform the secretary uh, the the receptionist about? I asked her to make sure I have no more patients for the day and that she can go home early. Uh, she checks her list and says, oh, No more patients uh, on schedule today, Doc. Alright, ma'am. You have a wonderful day. I'm gonna let you go home early. Don't worry about pay for the rest she of the smiles. day. She smiles. She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make I don't make a toxic work environment. I'm a good do- I'm a good doctor. No, yeah. no, she she's just happy to get a to get a early start to her weekend. <laughs> okay, that's, just a, that, that's that, understandable. She's, she's been doing a lot of paperwork. Okay, all right. So you yeah. so you've done Probably that. Cool. Uh, you have dismissed your uh, your receptionist, and you are going to continue on. Uh, I'm going to say that since you have made that stop and used a bit of extra time, we are going to switch over to uh, Dark and Catherine as they will get to their location first. So. Uh, KC, you arrive at, what did you say you were going, you said you were going to go to the, uh, to the Hall of Records. Yep, and we are going to go looking for, uh, anything we can find on, uh, when that house was built. Uh, who has owned it since, uh, anything, uh, just anything that mentions it, like, uh, uh, newspaper articles, anything like that. Alright. I am going to need a skill roll for that. Uh, Ooh. library use, please. You have a library use of 25%. Twenty-two. All right. You find. Uh, let's see. What do you find? Uh. You find uh, in uh some civil court records, uh, that the property uh, back in the uh, in the year of where is it? Uh. What do you find? Come on. I gotta f- see where it says here. Uh, you find that that property uh, was owned uh, in the era of uh, in about 1852 by a Mr. Walter Corbett Esquire. Uh, and you find that, uh, he, uh, had his will executed after he died on the property by a certain Reverend Michael Thomas, who is a pastor at the Chapel of Contemplation and Church of Our Lord Granter of Secrets. Uh, the church is noted to have closed in 1912, uh, but an address for the church uh, is there. So you now have the address to a certain chapel of contemplation uh, for the Church of Our Lord and Granter of Secrets. Uh, uh, that takes you about uh, say half hour to find. Uh... You could also, uh, as as you're looking through these, uh, and Catherine's looking with you with her uh, library use skill of thirty five percent. You see a uh, a certain uh, an employee of the of the Hall of Records uh, take an interest in uh, in you looking through that stuff. Um, he he approaches. He says. Um, 
Are you finding everything that you're looking for? Yep. He says. He says, uh, if you if you need uh if you need help uh figuring out where anything is, let me know. Uh. Uh, Casey is going to look up. Well, if you have, well, if you could grab anything on, that you know about on this address, and she gives it to, and she says the address. Uh, which address? The one for the house? Uh, you uh have the house. Forward. The house. Uh, the old house. Uh, he looks at it, and he says, uh, that Ooh, that house. You got any records? Anything? Owners? Mm -hmm. News articles? Anything like that? Forget the news articles. Well, uh, if you want, if you want news articles, you'd probably need to go somewhere like, uh, well, Boston Globe is down about fifteen minutes that way. You could probably go there and see if you can see if there are any newspapers about it. Forgive me for asking, but what are you doing looking into that place? I heard a lot uh, of bad stuff happen down there. Uh, Casey... Uh, Casey looks at him. Hey. Nothing more interesting than an old haunted house, right? He, uh, scratches uh, the back of his head and says, oh, I could probably think of a few things more safely interesting. You're not <laughs> thinking of going down there, are you? Last time I heard somebody going down there, they went violently mad. Casey does not say anything. She just continues looking. And Catherine speaks up and, uh, and says, Thank you for your help, sir. Uh, and uh, he, he nods and uh, excuses himself to go help uh, another uh, uh, peruser of the Hall of Records. Uh, you've, uh, are you continuing to search? Uh... Hey guys, I'm gonna mute for a minute. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find anything I can on, like, uh, on, like, the owners, uh, of that, like, people who have owned that house since it was built, uh, like, uh, how it was. In that case, uh... You'll need to make another library use roll. 21! <laughs> you know, I was, I was looking forward to having, like, Catherine help you out, but you don't even need it. Oh, boy. This, you... this, the thing is, is that I have really, is that I tend to low really, really shitty numbers, like, low numbers. Well, but that's good for this system. In this game, that's a good thing. In D and D, it is the bane of my existence. <laughs> <laughs> I have played yeah. plenty of D and D with you to know that. Can confirm. All right, I'm not going to finish that. You <laughs> are. <laughs> so you you continue searching. Uh, you find uh a couple of uh a couple of mentions. You're you're cross referencing things. Uh, about uh, the name you heard before, uh, Mr. Walter Corbett Esquire, and you find uh, a couple of passing references to a couple of lawsuits uh, that were directed at him in regards to, uh, to him and some unspecified actions occurring at the property. Uh, although it seems that what, whatever it's referring to is not contained within the Hall of Records, but you now know that there have been some lawsuits. Uh, roll me an idea roll. Uh, 
35. Your intelligence is... That's a, uh, that's a pass. Uh, if you, if it's anything to do with, uh, with lawsuits, uh, then there are possibly two places that you could go and check out. Uh, I would assume the courthouse would be one of them. Yep, the courthouse would be one of them. Probably also try the central Boston police station. But, uh, you, you and Catherine, uh, so you spend about another, uh, 30 minutes finding that. Uh, and by now, it's, uh, it's now about 1.45 p.m. You believe you've, uh, you've exhausted this lead. Uh, you've, uh, you've thoroughly searched, uh, all the stuff. All right, uh... Uh, Casey's so. next suggestion is going to the courthouse to learn more about those lawsuits. Uh, out of curiosity, did you, uh, did everybody before they departed on their separate routes, uh, arrange a meeting place to, uh, meet back up at in a time? Oh, shit. <laughs> we just got, like... <laughs> I'm going to take that as a no. All right. No. So meet back at... I mean, we didn't plan. Meet back at... I was going to say meet back at Lloyd's house at around supper time. I mean, that would be a good Let idea. Let us hope nobody's searches take them longer than supper time. Okay. All right. So. Well, you... oh, I mean, that's like what six hours. Uh, you also received another lead. Uh, that with newspapers, if you wanted to search through the newspapers, you could go to the Boston Globe, which is about fifty minutes away. The police station is about forty. Uh, no, wouldn't be that far. It's about it's about twenty something minutes away. And what about the courthouse? Uh, the courthouse is really close to the police station, like a couple minutes walk. Okay, uh, so uh, let's go to the newspaper. All right. So you head on to the uh, to the uh, newspaper area. So we're going to, uh, as you're making your way there, we're going to hop back over to the other section of the party. Uh, is Fluff back yet? And I'll be back in a sec. The driver, the driver of the car oh, is not there. Ah, oh, there we go. I just said I had to mute. Oh, okay. Yeah, vacuum. I I actually don't hear a vacuum in your mic. That's because I muted. My mom just stopped. Oh, okay. Well, uh, so you're on your way. What what location did you say you were going to? Uh, I thought we were meeting up at the house. Uh, you departed from the house to go to no, your. No, the... Oh, oh no, 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 no! You were going. Uh, so Adam so wanted we... to go to yeah. his house. Okay, yeah, so if, uh, uh, if uh, I wanted we... to pick up my toolbox, uh, yeah, actually. So, yeah, yeah. So if we were finished okay. at my clinic, then I was taking them by their respected houses or All right. whatever, wherever uh, they both wanted to go. You want to do my house? Yeah. I'm easy. I'm, I'm easy on whatever you guys want to do. Yep. Yep. Uh. Yeah. That that'll be uh that'll be quick. It's not too far away from uh from the clinic, uh fortunately enough. And uh what what items are you wishing to get? Okay. Um I'm planning on first things first first and foremost, getting my father's toolbox. Yep, you can bring the uh, whole toolbox with you. Yep, yep, whole toolbox. I'm also gonna be bringing my personal oh, guitar. Alright, hang on, I gotta meet again. Alright. You're yeah, going bring... You're going to bring your guitar. Yeah, because I know for a fact there's going to be a little bit of dead time here and there, so I might as well just, you know, learn a bit of the blues. Uh, yeah, the tw uh, was it? Yeah, like the 12 bar. Right. Uh, the, the car yeah, has a radio. A I mean, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I say not like in the car. So no, no, nope, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, just father's toolbox, and I decided to bring my uh, uh, my grandfather's Bible, just, just in case if things get really messed up and spiritual. Good, good plan. Good plan. Uh, and that's all. Yeah, I think that'll be it. All right. So you've done that. Uh, I will still say this is uh, since uh, since Dark spent about uh, they're going to be spending uh, an hour and fifteen minutes with what they just did. Uh, you, it's still up to you guys what you want to do. Where do you want to go? Uh, you have a lead. You guys don't know about any of the other leads yet. Uh, yeah. But you still have. 
uh, the address of the house uh, that you need to investigate. Uh, mm. And you have the address of the Roxbury Sanatorium, where the previous uh, family who inhabited that house is kept. Hmm. So wait a minute. Uh, that's, wait a minute. The sanatorium is kind of like just like an insane asylum, right? Yes. Okay. Oh what my do gosh, I have in, back, in, back in the 1920s, sanatoriums were not nice places. Yes. Lobotomies. I see. I mean, uh, yeah, so, yeah, what do we got? Fluff? What? Yeah. Um, I would imagine, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not forgot. But yeah, it's like, you want to head down to the sanatorium and see, uh, just like ask around and see what, uh, if there's anything yeah. pertaining to that. Uh, pertaining to the address or the owners. Yeah. While we're on the side. Or wait, is it, wait, is it just me? No. Wait, that, wait a minute, who was it? I forgot. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, it is, it is you, Fluff, and Randy. Fluff is on mute because mom is vacuuming. I said we can go Oh, there. I'm a dunce. <laughs> I'm so okay. sorry. But yeah, right. but yeah, Randy, yeah. and, uh, but yeah, would you be down for heading with me down to the sanatorium? We could just check out, like, uh, just, like, ask around there. Just be like, yeah, just ask for, uh, if there was any history with the, with the, with the address or the previous owners. Yeah, we should go there. All right, sure. Let's drive. All right. You make your way to the, uh, Foxbury <laughs> Sanatorium. Uh, you get there, pull up into the parking lot, uh, and you enter, uh, these facility. Okay. Which seems to be relatively well cleaned and decently man- maintained by the standards of uh, publicly available sanatoriums. You don't see any uh, any blood or you know uh, Scott, screaming Scott. people that are being tied down in the background of the lobby. Uh, okay. it's, uh, it's it's lucky enough. Uh, you do hear a bit of thumping and somebody banging on the cell door, but. You expected as much. Uh, and the man at the desk uh, looks up and uh, asks you for your business. I'm here to uh, inquire about the this address that I've been uh, led from one of my uh, affiliates. I've been, uh, been inquired to dig in a little bit of research in regards for the home, uh, in regards for the owners of this, uh, uh, for, for the owners of the home, and just the address history in general, if you have any. He looks at the address, and he uh, he cross references it with a patient sheet. You think? Mm-hmm. Uh, and hmm? uh, do I know of any patients who are currently in this uh, institution? Uh, you know of the ones that Lloyd Thomas told you about. Uh, the previous uh uh residents of the house, the Macario family. Okay, the Macario uh, family. Would uh, I be able to talk to them? Or at least visit them? As a profession, like, in, for my profession? Uh, probably not as a professional exactly, since you are not employed by this particular sanatorium. Uh, but I was the one who treated them before they were, like, sent away. Like, I tried, and then they... And then, like, other doctors were like, yeah, no, they didn't do that. You know what I mean? Um, these individuals, uh, inhabited the house before, uh, Lloyd bought it. No, I, okay. Oh, what? I'm saying, like, Oh, I thought you meant through him. Oh, okay. Uh, you mentioned, you mentioned the names. Uh, and he flips to him and says, uh, Okay, yeah, that's what I meant. Like, would yeah. I have known the particular people so that we can get some information? Uh, yeah, you, you know them through, uh, Lloyd Thomas telling you about them. Uh, and, yeah, uh, he flips through the pages of the book and he says, uh, Cario, Cario, McCarthy, Callister, oh, Macario, oh. Ah, these, um... I believe only the wife is available to see. Uh, the uh, okay. the mm. husband is not accepting any visitors, if you catch my drift. Uh, mm. 
I can show up with an appointment for now. I haven't had anyone visit in quite a while. Uh, may I ask your name? Lloyd Amura. Yeah, and he writes it down. Uh, and are uh, these two coming with you? Are you guys coming with me, or are you guys wanting to look through the records a bit? Um, I could come with you. Yeah, what, might as what, well. What records? <laughs> the snow. Okay. I, did I, it's, it Dark, I Dark is at the Hall of Records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. the records they have here. Oh, the records they have here. Uh, you would not have access to them, because you yeah. are not an employee. Okay, yeah. well, uh, then I guess you guys introduce your name so that they spell it right. Mm. Hi, I'm uh, Adam Marland, uh, you know, Adam and Eve, uh, M-O-R-R-O-W-L-A-N-D. Uh, he writes that down, accidentally spells it with an A, crosses it out, <laughs> rewrites it. <laughs> and, and I'm and Thomas, he... and I'm Thomas Lawton. That's La Tun. What are your skills, Thomas? Though? Let me check this. You do not have that skill. You, he, he, he raises a slight eyebrow uh, as you introduce yourself, uh, but only for the briefest of times before scribbling your name in there, and says, "Okay, um, right. Uh, please uh, wait for me to uh, get uh, uh, situated for a visit." I I do ask that if you are investigating as you say please be delicate she's uh she's in a bit of a somewhat compromised state when it comes to uh, all of these memories understood understood and he uh he briskly walks away and you are left for a, a few minutes waiting in the uh in the lobby and uh you hear General sounds of a sanatorium. People screaming. Somebody talking about the eyes, the eyes. They're everywhere and nowhere, the eyes. Uh, and, uh, Floyd, Floyd's face shifts slightly to a grimace. And uh, after about six or so minutes, the uh, man comes back. And he says, uh, Mrs. Uh, Macario will see you now. Uh, please follow me. And he leads you, uh, he leads you down. You see, uh, you see as you go down the hallway, uh, the, uh, the fact that this place was a very well run uh, sanatorium, uh, is definitely, uh, not holding up as you see more than what most people would see in the waiting lobby. Uh, you see, uh, Cup, uh, a man being dragged out of his cell in a uh, in his straight jacket. Oh my! Um, you see, uh, you see, in, uh, you hear insane giggling. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody's doing nothing but saying "tick, tock, tick, tock" in one of the rooms as you as you pass by it. Uh, but eventually, you get to the uh, room of Mrs. Macario and you will enter. And she's sitting there in a in a chair. There is for unfortunate souls. There are three chairs there that have been set out for you. Uh, the orderly offers for you to sit down and uh, observes the proceedings, and you are free to talk to Miss Macario as she nervously looks up at you. And Lord, do you wanna do you wanna start it off? Hello, oh, Mrs. Macario. I'm not sure if you remember me, but I, I was your doctor before all of this. Oh, doctor, I'm. S he, I. Uh, Floyd, right? Yes, yes, dear. Well, it's, it's good to see you. What? Well, uh, What's the purpose of your visit? This is Macario, the residence that you have taken in before all of this. 
she winces as you mention residence. Floyd, Floyd takes a takes a second, and you know, watching her reaction, trying to keep things as calm and so, you know, try not to exasperate her in any way. We've been called to see what's been troubling and what may have troubled you. And we want to figure out what you may have said. If you are ready to talk about it. If you are not, I'm not going to force you. What I, what I saw, what, what didn't I see? I saw. And she, she stumbles a little bit in, uh, over her words. That she manages to get banging, scratching all, all throughout the night. I looked around the property, there was nobody there. Never was. And it would just keep happening, and, and we'd go into the room, and it would stop, and it would be another noise, and, and sometimes I'd go into the kitchen, things would fly at me, and, and... They can't hurt you here, ma'am. They are not going to hurt you here. I, I still sure. see it. I still, I still, I still see the way, the way things flew about, even kitchen knives. I'd find them laying all around the house. In places I didn't put them. That nobody put them. Floyd my husband like... my husband Mark, he, he never touched any of those things. He never cooked. House is evil. Why are you looking into it? it should just be destroyed. Floyd nods at taking in her words not lightly. We're just investigating. We're just checking to see what can and cannot be done. And perhaps, hopefully, if we find out what has been haunting this place, as you said. Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to take out the garbage and then I thought I'd. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing! Perfect. And then I thought, uh, and then I thought, oh. I'll make coffee while I'm up. Just oh. randomly walks into the room with a garbage bag. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What was it? okay? Let me let me recenter myself. Oof. <laughs> Sorry. And if we find what has been haunting you and your family, it may help put you. It may put you at peace of mind. It may finally free you from you and yours alone, and we will make sure that no one else can help. And suffer the way he wants her and suffer. Peace of mind. I, I tried for four years to have peace of mind. It never goes away. What do you mean, investigator? You're not thinking of going there, are you? I was called in on a favor, and I will make sure that me and those who are in my company, I will make sure that what has been haunting you, what's been haunting others, will not haunt someone else. Floyd. And she she looks she looks at you, uh, and for the first time you think you see some sort of almost like clarity something almost breaking through the the nervousness as as her voice stabilizes for the briefest of moments and boy you're from all the times you were my for all you've done for me you're one of the best people in this world and don't go to that house don't don't go there it's evil It tried to kill us, Floyd! Floyd nods. I will... Then I will not... I will not trouble you anymore with this. I will... Uh, thank you for your information. We are just looking around. We are just trying to figure out what's going on. And ma'am, your, your help may help others. And I thank you for that. Thank you for taking time out of your day. And thank you 
for helping us. She, uh, she, you're not really sure how much of that got through to her. She's kind of starting to sob and cry a little bit. Uh, did anybody else, did the other two of you have anything you wanted to ask her? Hmm, let me think. If, hmm. Just be know if Floyd finds that you say something that might, like, exasperate her, they will punch you. You know what? Understandable. You know what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and now I crapped on what I was going to say. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> right as soon as you said that. <laughs> Mr. Lawton, is there anything you wanted to ask the, uh, the lady? No. And as she's sitting there pretty much crying, almost in hysterics at this point, the, the orderly is giving you a bit of a of a look and it might be time for you to leave. Yeah, Floyd, yeah. Floyd was trying to get out because I saw that they were trying they were starting to upset her with her with uh, what they were saying, so I was trying to get us to a stopping point of the interview so that we wouldn't like you know. Yeah, just to see. Um yeah, shall we just get a move? Uh, shall we just roll onwards? Rolling, rolling, rolling. Yes, uh, let's end this calmly and get out of this place because Floyd feels uncomfortable even being within this mm. facility. Bef- before yeah. we have to leave, yes. May I go to the guy at the counter that we talked with uh, him prior? You're following him back. Okay. Pretty much. So you're like right behind him. Okay. Uh, sir? I do have a question. Hmm. Yes. With her mental decline. Where like and I I assume like I'm I'm going I just hear just, I just like, hear Floyd cringing as you try to throw these words together. <laughs> well then <laughs> I'm literally improving this. So so with this mental decline that you know, like forgive me because I am completely, you know, like in, like completely new to this kind of you know this kind of world that I've never been involved with ever. Is it gives there you any like a vice... you don't say eyebrow raise. <laughs> you yeah, say that? I know, I know. But is there any advice you would give us in particular to having a deal? You know, like with if we have to, you know, like face through what me, uh, she might have to handle. Is there any advice you would have to give us? What she had to handle. <sighs> going senile is all I know. I don't know what she's really seen. I just handle the desk. But if you, you know, ask me, the... all these people are crazy. Floyd, Some... one of you is going to have to grab Floyd sure. in a minute. One of you is going to have to grab Floyd. It's understandable. I w- I'm just asking because, I mean, yeah, I'm. I'm just I'm very curious about this. I mean, the to be I've fair, to be fair, Floyd, you mentioned being uncomfortable in this place. This man has to listen to all of these sounds and see all of these sights day in and day out every day for a job. He doesn't get to leave like you do. <laughs> fair enough. He also, he also doesn't have. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna shut my mouth because I was gonna say he doesn't have war PTSD. <laughs> yeah. You say that, but there is a man about, like, five cells down screaming about, uh, how the Tommies are coming again. No, I was talking about the desk receptionist. Oh, sorry, I meant how, how yeah. the Jerrys are coming again. They're hopping out of the trenches. <laughs> that's why, that's the why strum why. troopin'. They're on the way! <laughs> but yeah, before- yeah, while we walk down the halls, I just muttered to myself, Poor unfortunate souls. Careful. Poor it's unfortunate souls. <laughs> it's painful seeing. Yeah, it's just. I'm sorry. Painful seeing. Not really, but. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm trying. I'm trying to hear with Randy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor unfortunate souls. I can't even imagine what they would have to go through. He like, and this was what we just witnessed was just only one case. I can't imagine everyone else. It's especially hard when you can't help them. Lloyd mumbles as they look at who some of her their previous. Patients just screaming out. So you've followed up with the uh, with the sanatorium. Uh, <laughs> where do you wish to go now? 
Um, should we just find a rendezvous point or something like that? Uh, what rendezvous point? Well, I mean, well, <laughs> uh, did, well, just like, wait, wait, did we already have like a meetup point or something like that? I forgot. Yeah, that's did what we you? asked earlier, and no one said anything. I couldn't. Say did anything. you? I don't remember. I don't recall anybody saying that before you split up. <laughs> no meeting point. Womp womp. I I I I I'll be nice. I'll 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 say you guys can decide on that now, and you will have said that beforehand. Okay. Well, I mean, I suggested sense. I suggested Lloyd's house at around supper time. So. so oh yeah. Are yeah. Are yeah. You, so you guys are gonna wait at Lloyd's house until supper time. I'd be down for that. Sounds, All right. That was fine. All right, you guys Ew. are going to pass time, so we're going to go back over to Dark oh. and while yep. we, uh, while the time has passed, while we wait at Floyd's house, I'll be practicing uh, blue, uh, the guitar, just you know, practicing Delta blues. Oh, and wonderful! Make me, make, make, make me an art <laughs> music roll. All right. Um. Oh yeah. Wait a minute. So just a di uh, D twenty or D one hundred roll. Uh, D one hundred roll. You will almost never roll a D twenty. I don't think. All right. Alrighty. And... 85! <laughs> oh, crap! Uh, it's gonna be a long afternoon for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Ian, you know what, I'll, I'll try it out. Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, uh... Ow, 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 ow. You know what? I'll, 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 I'll provide the, um, the actual pro uh, providing, uh... Oh boy. Sounding accompaniment. <laughs> yeah, it's about that, except for it's even more off key. Cringes <laughs> at it. It's something to take their mind off where they've just been. So, Lloyd just would not say anything. It is. It's horrible, but it's distracting. <laughs> it is marginally better than listening to the screams of insane people. Also, can I ask, um, mm -hmm. of the of the two that are with me, is there anyone else who can drive? Oh well, let's see. Oh yeah, I can, right? I uh, can. Mr. Mr. Marland has a drive auto skill of thirty percent. Mm-hmm. And he also has his own car. Oh, I did not put my skill in that. It's 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 uh it's not as nice as your car, but uh it's a it's a decent enough car. It's, it's actually better than uh than uh Dark's car as well. Hmm. So you guys are passing your time, unless you had something you wanted to do with that. Just for future references, if Lloyd starts getting, like, uh, kind of a nerd, they would probably ask- I'm trying to figure out who's the better driver out of everybody else, because this is a nice car, so if Lloyd needs to stop driving- Crashes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Oh yeah, uh, actually, now that I look at it, uh, you are not the richest person in the party, uh, Bluff. It's Catherine. Catherine has a credit rating of 70. Hmm. Catherine's also an NPC. Yeah. But you can still use her money. I mean, we can use her money. Maybe. But I'm also, uh, I, I was down being the richest player. I wasn't going to say I'm the... Because I know there's a wealthy benefactor. I am well aware of how D&D and probably Call of Duty works. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very much so. You always need a rich person in your party. Even in this <laughs> system. I mean, how else are you going to afford a Tommy gun? Oh my god. That is, that is the end goal. I will have a Tommy that, gun. You actually end. have enough cash on hand to go out and buy one. Yeah, but I'm not going to be... Listen, listen, heck, you forget. I'm frugal in everyday life. I'm going to be frugal in my D&D &D life. Same. You are getting paid, like, $20 a day for this. I know. So you're actually going to get it at a discount. Uh... Gun. Anyway, so uh, we're going to move back over to Dark. Uh, so you guys were going to the courthouse, or were you going to the police station? Uh, we were going to go to the uh, newspaper place first. Ah, the look, newspaper. And look for articles, because the newspaper is closer. All right. Said. 
And then we're going to go to the courthouse. You visit the Boston Globe, which is a place that you know to be of uh, pretty darn good repute. Best newspaper in the country, as their slogan says. Uh, And you you go there. It takes you about 15 minutes. It's currently about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, And you step into the uh, into the entrance way and you see uh, a man at a desk uh, and a woman behind him uh, who uh, they're they're talking and as you approach you over here you over here no I meant the morgue of a hospital of course I meant the morgue down there can you please get all of those papers set up so the editor doesn't have to rearrange it again? I don't need him up my ass again when he comes in in nine. And uh, he waves he waves the uh, the lady off, and she goes down uh, down some stairs. Uh, better behind the desk. Uh, and as you approach, the uh, man looks up and. Uh, he doesn't look particularly happy to see you. Uh, and he, uh, he has, uh, Welcome to the Boston Globe, the most amazing newspaper in the entire country. We are where you get your news. God. I, I, Hi. I, to say that. I was wondering if... I was wondering if we could look through your archives. We're looking for information on a certain property. Uh, so the archive is restricted to the general public. Well, what is, what is your what is your business with that information? We are investigating it. Uh, or we're investigating its history. You are going to have to uh, to convince him using some social skills, because uh, he, uh, you're going to have to convince him to let you into the uh, to the archive, because he is uh, he's not in a, in a state to let you in there, so. You can use one of four skills of your choice. You may try to charm him, you may try to intimidate him, you may try to persuade him, or you may try to fast talk him. Uh, I would probably go with, uh, I'd probably go with, uh, intimidate? Uh, so you are going, uh, so... You, are, you are going to be aggressive. Uh, Casey, uh, looks to him. Well, I mean, if you are not gonna let us down there, we can always just give you a list of, of the things we're looking for. Oh, but don't worry. It'll only be a- it should only be a few items, right? Right, Catherine? And, uh, Casey turns, uh, turns to Catherine and gives her a look of a play-along. You're trying to intimidate him and saying that is what you uh, said. And uh, oh, I'm kind of hoping Catherine will play along. Oh yes, we only need we only need information on this, 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 this. Uh, something like that. So you are trying to so. Basically, what what each for of these someone skills... who does not want to do for someone who doesn't want to do something, having a shit ton of work to do is very intimidating. Well, yes, but it's also like zero work to just say get lost. Exactly. <laughs> so so basically, you're your option your options right. here your your options here uh basically with with each of these skills that I mentioned right if you are trying to win RT over like with like friendliness and trying to like uh you know butter him up and stuff you would use charm if you're being aggressive towards him and threatening him you would use intimidate 
if oh, you okay. if you are trying to persuade him with rational arguments, you would use the persuade skill. If you are trying to con or deceive uh, Artie, you would use the fast talk skill. Okay. So. Yeah. Or, or oh yeah. Could. There, there's a, there's a good point. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn to Catherine. Uh, it should only be a few things, right? Uh, uh, it should Catherine, only be a few things. Catherine, Catherine smiles because her her father taught her well as to how to deal with these kinds of situations, and she's going to roll on her credit rating roll, and she passes with a fifty three. And she just says, Listen, it'd only really be about, like, uh, like a half hour we'd need access to it. And she puts down ten dollars on the desk. And, she's, and, she, and she says, We'll be in there and out of your hair really fast, I promise. You won't even know we're there. And, uh, and Artie looks at the, uh, at the man looks at the money and he says, All right. Just go down there, but don't don't steal anything. And he returns to his work. Uh, and he yells back, Ruth, let these men back into the archive, or, or these uh, ladies back into the archive. Is there like a, a perception roll or something? Uh, that would be the spot hidden skill. What are you because... wishing to look for? Oh no, I'm I'm just curious because. Uh, oh, are you, you trying to perceive his in, his like intentions or something? Because that would be psychology. No, no, I mean like, does he actually realize I'm a girl? Oh yeah, I just misspoke. That's my fault. Well, no, it that is part of like my. Casey's character is she's oh, often mistaken oh. for a boy. Does he realize that I'm a girl? Does he actually realize I'm a girl? Uh. Let's see. Uh. We're going to roll on Artie's spot hidden. Uh. No. No, he, he doesn't realize at all. You are probably one of the most manly men he's ever seen. <laughs> to him. It's all about a source of perspective. Ruth, could you let this couple into the archive, please? <laughs> I feel kind of bad leaving Dark and, uh... Uh... uh. Well, hmm? Catherine. Catherine, thank you. <laughs> that was stuck on a word. Uh, Casey and Catherine, I, uh, as we're walking there, just kind of giggle to themselves a little bit. This is not the. F this isn't the first time they've been mistaken for a couple. It's not going to be the last, and they find it funny every time. <laughs> <laughs> You are very highly educated. This is this is supposed to be your job. Yeah, and then everybody went with you because you had the nice car. I mean, are you gonna go in in Casey's old beat up car? That's like you know a death trap. It'll, it'll it'll take you from A to B, maybe to C. Just don't try to make it to D. Or are you gonna take it the 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 freaking like swag wagon over here with I with freaking? Go <laughs> so you two head down to the uh, to the archive area, uh, and on the way you encounter Ruth. Uh, who is a woman in her mid-twenties. Uh, 
She seems uh, astute and also a little bit stressed, uh, probably because of dealing with the guy in the and the receptionist area. That's understandable. And yeah, so she lets you in. Uh, you're taking down some steps uh, by by her, the record keeper. Uh, and you enter a dusty basement that's filled with filing cabinets, stacked high with newspapers and junk. Whole room smells musty. There's a boiler system in the corner as well that's giving off a lot of heat. Uh, Ruth starts organizing some of the records that she was told to do uh, beforehand. And you are free to search this area to your heart's content. All right. Uh... If you wish to search, you will need to make a library use roll. All right. Uh, first thing we're going to go check is obituaries. Obituaries. Uh, for because you said that the one guy died in the house, so that would be- that would probably be mentioned in that. Uh, let's see, obituaries. Uh, you find, uh, you find the following, uh, you have- you find the, uh, following story, uh, in 1909, uh, a family moved into this house and immediately fell prey to severe illnesses. In 1914, the oldest brother of that same family went mad and killed himself with a kitchen knife, and the heartbroken family moved out. In 1918, a, a third family, the Macarios, read to the house. But they left almost immediately under mysterious circumstances. Uh, you also find uh, that in 1880, in a feature story that was never published by the Boston Globe, a family of French immigrants moved into the house but fled after a series of violent accidents left the parents dead and three children crippled. Wow. The house until the 1909 story stood long vacant. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Are you continuing to search? Uh, yes, and in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, could we have Catherine look through, uh, could we have Catherine look for, uh, uh, like news articles on, uh, uh, like news articles relating to the obituaries. Uh, she's been. While you've been searching for this, you you take uh about a half hour to find all this stuff. And while you've been doing that, she's actually been uh helping Ruth uh kind of like clean up around the place and kind of like chatting her up and be uh befriending her. Uh, and eventually the conversation steers towards your investigation. Uh and about what you're looking into. Uh, and she manages... Uh, Ruth informs her uh, uh, that that old house uh, with all the stories on it, the Boston Globe files no longer uh, contain any records of stories from before the year of 1878 uh, due to a fire that happened way back then. Uh, if the Corbett house is mentioned earlier than that, there's no record of it remaining in the archive due to the fire. She okay. does, however, recommend that you could check the central library and see if there might be some things to look at there. All right. Uh, but your, uh, your continuous search uh, of those yields uh, those incidents uh, when you're looking for deaths and obituaries about the people there. Um, you did not find a, uh, a, a cross-reference of the name of Walter Corbett, 
who is a a, a specific name that you had from uh, somebody who previously owned the uh, the place. Uh, but uh, that would have been from before the fire, so that's understandable. Yep. Uh, hey, you guys so are you... talking quantum mechanics over here. I'm dead brained. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. Dark, Dark's the one following all the leads. <laughs> so you now have uh, a few places you could go. Uh, if you want, right, you you currently have three more leads you can, uh, you currently have three more leads that you know about that you can investigate, which is the courthouse and police station, the central library, and the address for the Chapel of Contemplation, who, uh, which was run by the pastor who organized Corbett's will. All right. Uh, what, uh, what time you, is it? Uh, it is currently about 2.30 p.m. You have about three and a half hours. If you want, you can go back to the house early. Uh, you don't know if they'll be there, but uh, you could meet a bit earlier than that. Uh, uh maybe we could meet that early. Yeah, uh, yeah, I am, yeah, I'm gonna say we'll go back to the house, and if they aren't there, we'll leave a note saying, uh, giving them, like, instructions on, like, places we can go and whatnot. Alright. Uh, if they aren't there, so that, you know, if, like, if slash when they do show up. Yep, uh, you make your way back to the house. Uh, uh, Mr. Adam, Mr. Thomas, uh, and, uh, individual Floyd, uh, as you're, uh, as you're kind of waiting around, uh, in the dining place, getting some, uh, some water, beep, Playing. beep, you hear a car pull up outside. And, uh, Dark, as you exit the door, you and Catherine hear the, uh, the screeching of a blues guitar <laughs> that is, uh, not been tuned properly. <laughs> uh, so... Okay. Alright, I think we've heard so, it. Uh, I think we got it. I think we got it. <laughs> so, um... So... Yeah, Casey, by the way, you guys, you guys have been listening to that for, like, about 90 minutes straight at this point. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm plugging my ears. Because Floyd's been drinking water tonight. Poor Barbara is stirring in her bed. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking dying of tuberculosis, <laughs> and now she's subjected to that. <laughs> What the hell? Oh my god. He's already, <laughs> he's already gone mad. So, so Dark, as you enter, and uh, finally uh, the, the music stops, as I imagine you make it clear that you have some things to say. I believe an exchange of information is probably about to happen. Uh, coffee? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Floyd's have, uh, the Thomases have coffee. Are we outside? Uh, you are in the dining room uh, okay. at the moment. Unless you wish to be outside for whatever reason. Alright. No, okay. I just wanted to know where we were. Yep, you're in the dining room, and, uh, Dark and Catherine have walked in. And... Question: Is yes. there a cork board in the house? Uh, a cork board? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, I don't know. I don't know. Wait. Oh, oh, a cork. Uh. Were they invented that yet? I don't know. Yeah. You, you get what I'm getting at here. Yeah, yeah. Five years okay. away from that? Okay. No, mm, there is not one. Okay. Okay. That's why I said that the, the uh, that the, uh, tuberculosis is still in the cell. It wasn't really in the cell. It wasn't really in the cell. It wasn't really in the cell. Is there a chalkboard? Uh, 
on wheels. Yeah, preferably. the uh, yeah. Uh, or on Lloyd the wall. has a Lloyd has a small uh, study room, and in it is a chalkboard. Uh, no. You have you have found a chalkboard. What do you wish to do with it? Well, share our ideas or what we gather. Ah, ah! You're going to be the uh, the uh, the official note taker. All right. Alrighty. So as uh, as Dark and Catherine enter, I imagine the exchange of information happens. So you all may discuss all, all the right. information you have with each other now. All right. So what y'all got across? All right, so uh, Casey is going to go over everything that they found, uh, that her and Catherine found. Also, could you write down the shit that we found? Because oh, you yeah. were talking too fast for me to write it My down. My bad. I was, I was supposed to actually uh, copy and paste it to you. So uh, let me copy and paste the, uh, the story from the newspapers that she found into the chat. Uh, so, you found... Also, is there oh, a table God, in the it's, room? Uh, it's, it's formatted terribly, but there you go. <laughs> Fingers crossed it'll I'm, work. I'm, 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 ca I'm copying and pasting this off of a, off of a PDF file. So. Oof. Ah, PDFs. Um, is it... The prime for file format for the sitcom, so, The Office. So that is that is the uh, story that you, the collection of stories that you found from the uh, from the Boston Globe. Uh, you also went to the uh, the Hall of Records. So. Uh, basically, uh, um, the, you found, that in the Hall of Records, you found, uh, the, office. That the civil, uh, the civil court, uh, things. Uh, I can't separate it well. Uh, but civil court records show that the executor of Walter Corbett's will was a Reverend Michael Thomas, the pastor of the Chapel of Contemplation and Church of Our Lord, Greater of Secrets. And from the register of the churches, you've got the address, uh, and uh, it notes that the chapel was closed in 1912. Uh, and you received uh, a tip from the clerk that uh, if you wanted to look into the, uh, the court records and everything, you might visit the police or the uh, courthouse. Oops, so that is what you have, uh, have found out, Dark. Yeah, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to relay all of this to the uh, to the others. I'll be back in a sec. I'm gonna grab a bowl for my Swedish. Uh, gentlemen and Floyd, you are relayed. Alrighty. Yep. Um, who wants to lay down the information first? What the fuck? I can't copy and paste is, that. Wait a is Floyd here? Yeah, uh, Floyd's here. Yeah, Floyd's here. Yeah, um, Floyd, do you wanna, do you wanna break down the information? Because I bet, I, I bet you know, uh... Cause I, you're probably the best expert to tell about all this. Yeah. Floyd's yeah. <laughs> phone is deadpan as they relay what the account of the, uh... Um, name X, what's the name of the lady again? Cause uh, Mrs. Macario. Mrs. Macario's uh, testimony and 
also relays the information from the other patients that, that Floyd has remembered from before. And uh, saying that they all seem to have similar symptoms. Dark, as you are relayed, Mrs. Uh, Dark Macarius. is being BRB, remember? Oof. I said I'm back. Oh, you're oh, back. There I we didn't go. hear you. I'm sorry. So, Dark, you hear the story about Mrs. Macario and how she alleged that uh, things were flying around the house, she hear weird sounds uh, all around the place, uh, strange goings on. As you are being relayed the story, make me a roll on your occult skill. Oh? Hey, Hex, uh, how do you spell um, Macario? M C C A R I O. M E. What did you roll? Twenty six. Twenty six. Wait, 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 wait! I can okay. I use my points? I can. You said I you, can use points. Yes, you may. You may use one point of luck, if you wish. Yes, I wish. All right. So decrease your current luck value to fifty four. And you have passed that roll. So, as you're hearing the story, uh, you hear about, uh, the main thing that you focus on is the fact that, uh, that certain, that certain objects were, were flying around as she entered certain rooms. And then you relate that to how, uh, there's a history of people dying there. You believe, uh, that the symptoms of this haunting, uh, are similar to that of a poltergeist. Time to go ghost busting. Interesting. Okay. Does Casey let us know that? Uh. Yeah, Casey is going to relay uh, the information. Uh, she's going to say, "Huh, that kind of sounds like a poltergeist." Catherine. Okay. Catherine smiles and says, "That's why I told Father to send you that letter. I knew you were." You know, into, into all this stuff. Mm. Fascinating. Mm. Strange. You know, you guys are the experts in terms of that end of the, just like the cult and all that stuff, man. All oh, that weird from, stuff. The, the most spiritual I've ever gotten is just being casually Christian, so I really have no say in this regard. And Catherine, Catherine smirks uh, as as, uh, as Thomas says weird stuff, and she says, "Well, it wouldn't be called the occult if it was full of normal knowledge." You know what? I'll tip my hat to that, or at least tip my noggin to that, because I probably don't have <laughs> my noggin. <laughs> Man rips off the scalp of his head, presents his brain. Everyone roll a sanity check. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> he just got scalped. Don't worry, the doctor's here. <laughs> uh, roll for medical. <laughs> That's what I mean. I didn't take the game from zero to hero. <laughs> that escalated quickly. Yeah, just wait till the uh, cosmic whims of an elder god just do that for you. Oh my Great! god! Great. He, anyway, <laughs> so uh, we are going to. I'm going to uh, uh, split the recording here and start a new one.